Welcome to a brief introduction to the IUPAC nomenclature of cyclic alkanes. Uh, in this short discussion, we'll cover some of the very basic rules of applying this IUPAC nomenclature system to hydrocarbons which contain a single cyclic structure. The first step in identifying such organic molecules is to find the longest continuous carbon chain which produces a cyclic structure. Once we've identified this parent hydrocarbon, the next step in the process is to identify and name all of the resulting hydrocarbon substituents which are attached to this parent. And then we'll name them as usual methyl, ethyl, propyl, etc. In the third step, we'll number the parent hydrocarbon using a scheme which starts with a 1 at the substituent which is alphabetically first and then proceeds around the ring in such a way as to produce the lowest set of numbers overall. Finally, in step four, we construct the compound name, indicating the names and positions of each substituent alphabetically, and ending with the name cyclohexane, where X is the prefix for the number of carbons within the parent. Now let's take a look at a few examples so that we can see how these rules are applied. First, let's identify some simple cyclic structures which do not contain any substituents at all. Shown in this slide are the first four cyclic hydrocarbons which are possible. Of course, it's not possible to have a cyclic hydrocarbon with one or two atoms. So the smallest would contain three. So to draw each of these in a skeletal representation, they would look something like this. And we would name each one as a cyclo-something-ane, where that something is the same prefix that we would give to a substituent with that number of carbons. For example, 3 would be a cyclopropane, 4 carbon atoms in a ring is a cyclobutane, 5 is a cyclopentane, and 6 atoms in a ring structure is a cyclohexane. Now, larger ring structures are possible and they proceed in the same fashion as substituent names, going from hexanes to heptanes to octanes and onward. Now let's take a look at a uh, cyclic hydrocarbon which actually has a few substituents and see if we can name it using IUPAC convention. So here's the skeletal structure for the compound that I've just shown you. Now the first step in identifying one of these uh, cyclic hydrocarbons is to identify the parent which recall should be the chain which contains the ring. In this case we have a five-membered ring. Notice that there are other chains within the molecule which can produce a five carbon chain, but we do not use these because the cyclic nature of the parent hydrocarbon drawn previously overrides this decision. So this will be our parent chain for the rest of this particular molecule's name. In step two, we identify and name the remaining substituents. So let's color these in green and label them as methyl because each has a single carbon. So we're dealing with some kind of dimethyl cyclopentane. But this name is still ambiguous because the positions of the methyls have yet to be indicated. So we move on to step three, numbering the parent hydrocarbon. We start with a one at the substituent which is alphabetically first. In this case, either one of the methyl groups can be used because they each have the same name and therefore it is an alphabetical tie. So let's take a look at what happens if we number our ring in one direction or the other, starting from a 1 at the methyl group. First, if I number around the ring as represented clockwise, I have methyls at the 1 and 3 positions. If instead I start with a 1 at the same methyl and work my way around the ring in the counterclockwise direction, I have methyls at the 1 and 4 positions. So because the 1 and 3 positions are the lower set of numbers, this is the numbering scheme I will use. The final step is to name the compound using the IUPAC convention. To do so, we'll name the parent chain, indicating that it is cyclic, by calling it a cyclopentane. Finally, we'll insert the prefix for our dimethyls and their position. So we have a 1,3-dimethyl cyclopentane. Let's try another one. 
take a look at this structure and we'll draw this in the skeletal structure so that it's a bit easier to see. Now in this case we have to identify the parent chain and there are actually two different potential chains. One of which contains four carbons and is linear, the other of which contains four carbons and is cyclic. Because of the cyclic nature of the currently indicated parent, this is the one that we will use for naming this compound. Now in this particular instance, using this four carbon cyclic chain as our parent gives us only one substituent. And because we can begin naming the cyclic or numbering the cyclic uh, parent at any position, we naturally would choose to number the position containing our butyl group as one. But regardless of the direction in which I go around this ring, I will have a one butyl cyclobutane. And because of this, it's not necessary to designate the location of the single substituent. So we'll call this a cyclobutane and it will have a butyl substituent, but does not need a number to indicate its position due to the cyclic nature of the parent hydrocarbon. This is a complete IUPAC name, butyl cyclobutane. Let's move on to something a little bit more complicated. Here's a compound which has a rather large cyclic alkane and three substituents. The parent chain should be very obvious. It has seven carbons, so this will be a cycloheptane. Each of the three substituents on the cyclic parent chain are different. So I'll color them in differently so it's easy to see. We have the methyl, the ethyl, and the propyl groups, and we need to indicate their position on this ring. Following the IUPAC rules, we're required to start with a 1 at the alphabetically best choice, which gives us a lower set of numbers. So even though the ethyl is alphabetically first, we can't use it as the single starting position because that would generate a very large set of numbers. Instead, we have to start at one end and move around, going 1 at the methyl, 2 at the ethyl, and 3 at the propyl, or the alternative where we have one at the propyl, two at the ethyl, and three at the methyl. Because of the alphabetical rules in this case, we have a situation where we can have one methyl or one propyl. And because it is first alphabetically, we use the methyl numbering system. This will be a cycloheptane molecule with a methyl in the one position, an ethyl in the two position, and a propyl in the three position. And although we have numbered these positions serially, we actually name the substituents alphabetically, meaning we'll have a 2-ethyl, 1-methyl, 3-propyl cycloheptane as our compound name. 